Today we will be in chapter three, section four, motion, money, and mixture problems. Our three topic objectives for today are to solve motion problems involving two rates, to solve money problems, and to solve mixture problems. Chapter three, section four, motion, money, and mixture problems. Those are the three types of problems we're going to encounter today, and I'm going to do two examples of each. So we're going to start off with motion problems. Motion problems are a problem in which an object is moving at a specific rate for a specific period of time. So those are going to be rate times time equals distance problems. And two equations that you could use for these problems are distance 1 plus distance 2 equals the total distance or you could also use distance 1 minus distance 2 equals a difference in your distances and for each of your three types of problems that we're going to do today I'm going to provide you with a table sometimes organizing your thoughts into a table can help you get your equations and get your numbers correct so for motion problems, you could have the following table where you have an item column, a rate column, a time column, and a distance column. And then based on whatever your um, information given, you can come up with, with your table. I am using your online textbook. I'm using chapter three, section four in your online textbook to do these example problems. If you want to follow along, you can open yours up as well. But I will be going back and forth between the book and my notes page so that you can see the questions that I'm reading. Okay, let's do example one. And drop it over. Okay, example one is a camping trip and it says Marianne and Paul and their son Danny are on a canoe trip. Danny is in one canoe, Paul and Marianne are in a second canoe. Both canoes start at the same time from the same point and travel in the same direction. The parents paddle their canoe at two miles per hour and their son paddles his canoe at four miles per hour. In how many hours will the excuse me the two canoes be five miles apart okay and let me show you a picture over here on the left hand side it shows you this nice picture and it shows you the parents are traveling at two miles per hour and Danny is traveling at four miles per hour but they're both going in the same direction so I'm gonna pull up my paper and we're gonna work through this one Okay, so let's make a table just because it might help you to organize your information. I think I gave us too many rows, but that's okay. We're going to have a who, because we have the parents and Danny. And then we're going to have their speed and the time and then their distance. Because remember, we're doing a motion problem, and so that means we're going to have rate times time equals our distance. Okay. So we have the parent speed is two miles per hour. Danny's speed is four miles per hour. The time we do not know because we just don't know what that is. And then the distance. Distance is rate times time. So the parent's distance is two times t, which is two t. Danny's distance is four times t which is 4t. And then we don't know the time, but
but we know eventually they're going to be five miles apart. So we'll put that down there. And the reason why we put all this into a table is because then we can get our equations. So we know that at some point, Danny's obviously going to be further out because he's going faster. So Danny's distance minus his parents' distance will give us five miles because that's what they told us in the question. So if we found out that Danny's distance is 4t, we can plug that in right here. So we get 4t minus his parents' distance is 2t. So we get 2t and then the equals 5. 4t minus 2t is just 2t. Divide both sides by 2 and you get t equals 5 over 2, which equals 2.5. And t is our time. Time is done in hours. So that means in two and a half hours, the parents and Danny will be five miles apart. Okay. Let's do another example. Like I said, we're going to do two examples of each type of problem. So we're going to do another example of a motion problem. Okay, here it is. This is number, this is example two. This is on page 198 of your book. So it says two highway paving crews are 20 miles apart and they're working towards each other. One crew paves 0.4 mile of road per day more than the other crew and the two crews meet after 10 days. Find the rate of rich, at which the, each crew paves the road. Okay, and if I skip this over a little bit, you can see there's a nice picture here where there's 20 miles and the two crews are finally gonna meet and it actually gives you a little bit of the answer. So let's get back over to my page. All right, so there's a lot of information here. So I'm gonna make another table. I think the tables are nice for organizing. Okay, so our first column is going to be which crew and then our second column is the rate that they pave then the time then the distance okay so we had a fast crew and we had a slow crew so let's just write slow and fast as our crew titles and the slow crew it told us did what? The slow crew, we don't know, but we know the fast crew paved 0.4 miles more than the slow crew. So that means it would be 0 0.4 plus whatever the slow crew did. So let's just call the slow crew, their, let's just call their rate R, and so we'll put that in. Now what's our time? Well, they told us that after 10 days, the two crews meet, so our time would be 10. And then what's our distance? If we're just multiplying across, remember we multiply across to get this last column, so that would be 10R. We multiply across here. I'm just gonna put the 10 out front of the R plus 0.4, sorry, not 0 0.04, just 0.4. Okay. Now, the crews are working towards each other, is what it said. So that means they're going to cover a certain amount of distance. And it even told us what the distance was. It told us they're going to cover 
20 miles. The two crews are paving 20 miles apart. Okay, so that means we have the slow distance plus the fast cruise distance equals 20 miles because they end up meeting after 10 days. So that means they covered the 20 miles. And based on our table, we know what our slow distance is and we know what our fast distance is. Our slow distance we came up with was 10R. Our fast distance was 10 times R plus 0 0.4. And all of that is going to equal 20. So now we need to solve for our R. So we're going to distribute in our 10. That will give us 10R plus 4. And that equals 20. Combine our like terms and subtract over the 4. And that gives us 20R equals 16. So now we need to divide both sides by 20. And that gives us our R equals 0 0.8. And what was our R? Our R is the rate of the slow crew. So the slow crew paves 0.8 miles per day. We know that the fast crew is 0.4 plus R. So we have fast crew equals R plus 0.4. We just found out our R is 0.8. So plug that in. 0 0.8 plus 0 0.4 is 1.2. So that's the rate of the fast crew. Our second type of problem for today is money problems. Money problems are going to be principal times rate times time equals the interest that we earn. And there's really three different types of interest problem um, equations that you could see. You could see interest one plus the interest two and that will give you your total interest. Or you could see interest one minus interest two to give you a difference of interest. And then you could do setting the two interests equal to each other. Um, again, sometimes this beginning note information doesn't make a lot of sense until we start working through the problems. Um, but here is a sample of the table that you're going to want to use for these problems. And there's going to be five columns. You're going to have an account column, principal column, rate column, time column, and an interest column. For these problems, these really, really help you organize all of the information that's going to be given in your word problems. So I really recommend using the table for these problems. Okay, so I'm still using examples out of your textbook. And for the first example for our money problem, I'm going to be doing example three, which is on page 198. So let me get that pulled up for you. All right, here's the example. It says Carmine has $15,000 to invest. He is considering two investments. One is a loan that he can make to another party that pays him 8%, simple interest for a year. A second investment is a one-year CD that pays 5%. Carmine decides that he wants to place some money in each investment, and he wants to earn a total of $1,125 in interest in one year from both of those investments. So how much money should Carmine put in each investment? Okay, let's get our table out because that's going to really, really help us with all of that information. So here's my table. You have an account column, a principal column, a rate column, a time column, and an interest column. All right, in this problem, it says he wants to use a loan. So we're going to have a loan as a type of account. And he also wants to use a CD. 
We don't know how much principal we're putting in each of these yet, so I'm going to come back to that column. But we do know the rate that we're going to get from each of these. The loan, it said, had an 8% rate. Is that correct? The loan has 8%, so that'll be 0 0.08. And the CD had a 5% rate. Remember, when you switch from percents to decimals, you have to move your decimal place to the left two spots. Now, what is our time? Our time is one year, so that's actually really nice. Our time is one year for both of those. And then our interest earned we don't know yet because we don't know how much principal we have. So we need to figure out what our principal is going to be. We know total, we know total he's investing $15,000. That's what our problem said. So we need to let one of our accounts be X because we don't know how much he's investing. So let's let our loan be X. We're investing X amount of dollars. So if we're investing X amount of dollars in the loan, how much are we investing in the CD? Well, we'd have to take 15,000 and subtract out the amount that we put in the loan and that will tell us how much we put in the CD. Okay? Now, in order to find the interest that we're earning from our loan, we have to take the P, the R, and the T times themselves. Luckily, the T column is just a 1, so that makes it nice and easy. So the interest we're going to earn from our loan is going to be 0.08x. I just took everything times itself, or times the others. So our interest from our CD will be 0 0.05 times 15,000 minus x. Sorry, I ran out of my box a little bit. So I just took my P times my R times my T, and that gives me that. Okay, so what good does this table, what good is this table? Well, we know at the end of the year, his total interest that he is wanting to earn is $1,125. That's how much he wants to earn at the end. So that means we need to take our loan interest and add it to our CD interest and that's going to give us the 1125. Well we just found out that our loan interest is the 0.08x and our CD interest is the 0 0.5 times 15,000 minus x. all of that is going to equal 1125. So now we just solve for our x. We have to distribute in the 0 0.05 0x8 plus and that's going to be 150 minus 0 0.05x equals 1125. I'm going to combine my like terms and that gives me 0.03x subtract over my 750 and that'll give me 375. Now I have to divide both sides by my 0.03 and that will give me 12,500. So he invested $12,500 into the loan because that's what our X stood for. Okay, and we know that the CD, the amount invested in the CD is just $15,000 minus our X. But we just found out our X is $12,500, so we can plug that in for our X value.
and that should give us 2,500 in the CD. So these tables that I've been showing you are actually very handy, at least I think so, on really organizing the information that they gave us. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, this is example four from page 199 and it's a rocking chair example. And it says, Johnson's Patio Furniture Store sells two types of rocking chairs. A single person rocking chair sells for $130 each, and the two person rocking chair sells for $240 each. On a given day, 10 rocking chairs are sold for a total of $1,740. We need to determine the number of single person and the number of double person rocking chairs that are sold each day. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my table set up because that's going to help me organize all of that information that they just gave me. Okay, so here's my table, and I think I might have given myself too many columns, but that's okay. So we have the type of rocker, which we have a single and a double. We have the number of rockers that are sold every day. We have the cost of the rocker, and then from that we get the amount, or the total. Sorry, I made that into two columns and it really needed just to be one. Okay, we know every day, here I can do another row though for a total, we know every day we are going to sell how many rockers? We're gonna sell 10 total, right? And we know that at the end of the day, we are gonna have $1,740 spent. Whoops, that doesn't go there. $1,740 spent. That's the total amount we're gonna bring in. But we don't know how many singles and how many doubles. Okay, the cost of a single is $130. The cost of a double is $240. We do know that from our problem. Now, how many singles and how many doubles are we selling each day? We don't know, so let's let one of them be X. Let's let the singles be X. And then the doubles that we're gonna sell for a day, well, we know we sell 10 every day total, so let's do 10 minus the number of singles that we sold, and that'll tell us our doubles. So, in this case, the amount of money that we make from our singles is going to be the number that we sell times $130. Because for each one we sell, we're gonna make $130. So that's gonna be 130X. Do the same thing for the doubles, which will be 240 times 10 minus X. And the reason why I went ahead and put this third row in here for the total column is because right here we have our equation. The amount column is our equation. We have to take the amount that we're gonna earn from the single rockers, we have to add that to the amount we're gonna earn from the double rockers, and that's gonna give us our total amount. So right there's our equation. We have 130x plus the 240 times the 10 minus x, and that equals 1740. Now we just need to work through this problem. 
So 130x plus, distribute in the 240, you get 200, 2,400 minus 240x equals 1,740. I'm going to combine my like terms, so I get 2,400 minus 110x equals 1,740. Subtract over my 2,400, and I get negative 110x equals negative 660. Divide both sides by the negative 110x, and you get x equals 6. What did 6 represent? 6 represented the number, number of single rockers. So we're selling 6 singles a day, and we know that doubles are 10 minus our x. If our x is 6, we get 10 minus 6, and so that equals 4. So we're selling 4 doubles every day, and we're selling 6 singles every day. The last type of problem that we have today is known as a mixture problem. Mixture problems are any problem in which two or more quantities are combined to produce a different quantity or in which a single quantity is separated into two or more different quantities. Now there are two different types of mixture problems and the first type is when we're mixing solids. These are concerned about the value or the cost of the mixture. And value is going to be the quantity times the price per unit. And for these problems, you're going to typically have value one plus value two equals the value of the mixture. Okay, I'm gonna slide it down just a tiny bit. There is a sample um, table of what you're going to be using. You'll have an item category, a quantity category, a price category, and a value category. And you'll have the item one and the item two, and then you're going to have the mixture of those two items. The first example that we're going to work, and the only example we're going to work that has solids in it, is going to be example five from page 201 from your textbook. And it says, Scott's family grass seed sells for $2.65 per pound. And Scott's spot filler grass seed sells for $2.30 per pound. How many pounds of each should be mixed to get a 10 pound mixture that sells for $2.40 per pound? That is a lot of information, but just like with all of our previous problems, that's why we use these little tables. So here's my table, so I can work through this problem and organize all of the information. The items that we have in this problem are seed and filler, and then we're going to combine those two things to get a mixture. So we have seed, we have filler, and we have mixture. Now, we don't know how much seed or how much filler we're going to use, but we do know, based on our question, by the end we want a 10 pound mixture. So we know at the end we're going to have 10 pounds of the mixture. Um, the price of the seed is $2.65. The price of the filler is $2.30. And the price that we want the mixture to be is $2.40. So if we know at the end we need 10 pounds, then let's say we need X amount of seed. So how much filler would we need then? We would need to have 10 pounds minus however many pounds of seed we have. So 10 pounds minus X. And that will tell us the quantity of the filler. Okay, and just like in the other problems, we're gonna take our quantity times our price and that's gonna give us our value in our value column. So we're gonna have 2.65x. You're going to have 
2.30 times 10 minus x, and then you're gonna have 2.40 times 10 for the last one. Again, I put the mixture in there because this is going to be our equation. Our equation is going to be the 2.65x plus 2.30 times 10 minus x, and all of that's going to equal the 2.40 times 10. The value of the seed plus the value of the filler is going to tell us the total value of our new mixture. So now we just need to work through this problem. We have 2.65x, and we need to distribute in our 2.3. So 2.3 times 10 will give us 23, minus 2.30x equals, and then if you multiply 2.4 times 10, you get 24. I'm gonna combine my like terms over here, so that'll give me 0.35x, plus 23 equals 24. Subtract over my 23, so I get 0.35x equals one, and then I need to divide both sides by 0.35, and that will give me x equals 2.86. So what was my x again? My x is the quantity of seed, so that means I have 2.86 pounds of seed. Okay, but we need to also know the amount of filler that we're gonna have. So filler was 10 pounds of the mixture minus our X. So that means we would have 10 minus the 2.86 that we just found out was our seed. And that tells us that we have 7.14 pounds of filler. The mixture problems are definitely the hardest problems you're gonna have when it comes to word problems but I cannot stress to you how much nicer it is with this table. So take the time to learn how to lay out these tables because it does make solving the problem so much easier. Okay, so we're gonna move on. To the other type of mixture problem. The first one that we did was mixing solids and so the seeds are solid. The next type of problem that we are doing is mixing solutions. So when you mix solutions, you're concerned about the content or the strength of the mixture. This really doesn't change a lot of how you're going to work these problems or approach these problems. It's just how they're going to be worded. And I can promise you there's always a mixture problem on your final exam. So these are ones you're definitely going to want to pay attention to. And there's our example of a table. We will have our solution, we will have our quantity, we will have our strength, and then we will have our amount. Okay. So I'm doing number seven off of page 203, if you want to follow along, where you can just see it right here. So it says, Nicole Pappas, a medical examiner, has 40% and 5% solutions of phenobarbital. How much of each solution must she mix to get 0 0.6 liters of a 20% phenobarbital solution? And if a lot of these sound like science questions more than math questions, hopefully that empowers you because you will see that you will use them in other places, not just in a math class. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a table, which I probably should have done before, so that we can organize all of our information. 
Okay, and just like from above, we'll have a solutions, a quantity, um, a strength, and an amount. Okay, so it said in our question that we had a 40% solution and a 5% solution. So we have a solution that's 40%, we have a solution that's 5%, and then we're going to have a solution that's a mixture of those two, right? That's the whole point. We're mixing those two to get a different one. So let's. I'm going to skip over to the strength column because this one's a very easy column. The strength of the 40% solution is what? 40%. Again, remember though, we're going to have to switch that over to a decimal. So the strength of the 40% solution is 0.4. So the strength of the 5% solution would be 0 0.05. And what is the strength of our mixture? Well, from our question, it said it is 20%. So that would be 0.2%. Okay, and so now let's figure out the quantity. What is the quantity of our 40% solution? We don't know, but we know from the question we want to end up with 0 0.6 liters of our mixture. We know that for a fact. So let's let our 40 equal our x, because we don't know how much it is, and then 5% solution, we know we're going to have 0 0.6 minus however much we use of our 40% solution. Okay, and once you have all this information in your table, then the amount category over here is just multiplying across. So you get 0 0.4x you get 0 0.05 times 0 0.6 minus x and you get 0 0.6 times 0 0.2. Again, the nice thing about the table is that last category is going to give you your equation. So you'll have 0 0.4x plus 0 0.05 times 0 0.6 minus x equals 0 0.6 times 0 0.2. Now we just have to work out our problem. So we need to take and distribute in our 0 0.05, so that'll be 0 0.03 minus 0 0.05x equals, and then 0.6 times 0.2 will be 0 0.12. I'm going to combine my like terms over here, my x's. So that'll give me 0 0.35x plus 0 0.03 equals 0 0.12. And then I'll need to subtract my 0 0.03 over. I'll get 0 0.35x equals 0 0.09 and I need to divide both sides by the 0.35 when I do that I get x equals 0 0.26 and what was my x? my x was the quantity of my 40% solution and so since it said liters that means I'm doing 0 0.26 liters of 40% solution. So my 5% solution was 0 0.6 minus x. And if I found out my x is 0 0.26, I just need to subtract that. And that gives me a 0. 3, 4, which is the liters of 5% solution. So I need to mix those two together to get 0.6 liters of 20% solution. Alright, 
we have one more example to work through. It's another mixing solutions example. I like to work two of these just because these for sure show up on your exams. They for sure show up on your final. So I like to stress the importance of these problems. And I will honestly admit to you that before I learned how to do these tables, I also hated these problems and I struggled with them so much. And I'm a teacher, so that should tell you how important these little tables are because they make them so much nicer. Okay, I'm going to work example number eight on page 204. This one is, a, is exactly like the last one, only now we're doing punch. So it says an orange punch contains 4% orange juice. If 5 ounces of water is added to 8 ounces of punch, determine the percent of orange juice in the mixture. Okay, so there's my graph, or my table, excuse me. And we're going to have our solution column and our quantity and our strength and our amount. And our two or our solutions are we have a punch, that orange punch, we have water, and then we have our mixture. Okay, it says if we add five ounces of water, so that's our quantity of water, we have five ounces of water to eight ounces of punch. So we know our quantities this time. So how much mixture would we have then if we added five ounces of water to eight ounces of punch? We're gonna have 13 ounces of mixture. And it says that the strength of our punch is 4%. So that'll be 0 0.04 is the strength of our punch. So how much orange juice then is in the water? Well, there's none because it's water. So that would be a zero. There's zero percent in there. And then how much is in our mixture? That's the thing that we don't know in this case. We don't know what the strength of our orange juice is in our mixture. So that's where our X is going to go in this case. And then we're going to do our amounts, which again, you're just multiplying these two to get that. So you're going to have 8 times 0 0.04. 5 times 0 is just 0. And then 13 times X is 13X. So this equation is actually a little bit simpler because of that 0 in there. So you're going to have 8 times 0 0.04 plus 0, and that equals the 13x. And we need to solve for our x. So 8 times 0 0.04 is 0 0.32, and that equals 13x. We need to divide both sides by 13, and that's going to give us 0 0.025 equals our x. So right there is actually the end of this problem because there was only one x. We don't have to find out another value or anything like that. What was our x? It was the amount of orange juice in our mixture. And so since this is percentages, we need to make this into a percent. So we need to take our decimal place back two spots. And that tells us that we have 2.5% juice in our mixture. So those are the types of problems that you're going to have in section 3.4. These are literally exactly like the ones I got, or like the ones you're going to see on your homework. So I'm not going to work any of your homework problems. Please utilize the tables in these problems though. They will make your life so much simpler. And if you want extra practice, make sure to use the help me, or the similar exercise button at the bottom of your homework problems so that you can really grasp how to do these problems. 
So good luck on your homework and good luck on your quizzes.